This video is sponsored by EcoFlow. So look what I decided to fly today for the first time in, I don't know, at least two years, my original Mavic Pro. I've been flying a lot of different drones today. We finally have some decent weather, like it's not 20 below, it's actually 25 above today, so it's really, really nice. But how far we have come, you guys, right? So for old time's sake, I wanted to fly this just to remind myself of how far we've come, not only in the quality of the drone, but in the image quality. Now, is the image quality that great on the Mavic Pro? No, but is it as fun to fly as some of the newer drones, like even my Mavic 3? Yes, this is still a really fun drone to fly. And I just thought, isn't it interesting how we always have to have the latest and the greatest when it comes to all kinds of technology, and that includes drones. Now, let me start this off by saying I have no idea if we're gonna see a DJI Mini 3 anytime soon. But the real question for me is, do we really need a Mini 3? Let's talk about it. Hi everyone, welcome back. And if you are here for the very first time, my name is Russ and I wanna thank you for stopping by the channel. So the DJI Mini 2 was released on November 20th of 2020. And it was a very welcome upgrade from the Mavic Mini. DJI actually listened to the consumer and they actually made a very awesome little drone with this that for the most part is still one of the best drones that you can buy today, 16 months later. Did you hear that? 16 months, are we really that spoiled that we demand a new version of a drone model every year and a half? And yes, I know the timeline between the Mini and the Mini 2 was only 13 months, but I really think that had a little bit to do with DJI capitalizing on the announcement of Remote ID. Knowing that sub 250 gram drones would be immune to some of the requirements of Remote ID, DJI knew that people would be eager to continue jumping into the mini drone market. So I think they released it a little sooner than originally planned. Now what I think has really driven all of the recent speculation about the Mini 3 is the newly released Nano series from Autel. Autel took a pretty deep dive into the sub 250 gram market and many people are gobbling it up and for good reason. Its owners have been very happy with it and it looks like we finally have some actual competition to DJI. From what I have seen, it looks to be a very well-built drone, albeit a little bit on the pricey side. But as I said, it also has many people wanting more in whatever follows the Mini 2. So what do people wanna see in the Mini 3? Okay, so what I did is yesterday I put out a video shorts for my channel members, for my quad squad, and then again for all of my viewers, for my subscribers, and I asked if we do get to see a Mini 3, what would you like to see on it that would make you interested in it? So I'm gonna read a few of them to you. There's some great suggestions here. First of all, Phil says a mini FPV drone that would be nice. Don't really care to upgrade my current mini since it does just fine for what I want. And there have been some rumors out there about the mini FPV. I think that'd be really cool. Mark Larson said more than one model so they can have a basic one under 249 grams and another pro version that has a larger sensor, obstacle avoidance and quick shots. Love the small size, but I wish it had more features. So I think that's a pretty common, like a lot of people are asking for that. They wanna see two versions of it, like one that stays under 249, maybe has a few little upgrades, but then have just this amazing uh, Mini 3 that's maybe over 249, but it has this amazing camera, it has obstacle avoidance and all that, just to give us more options. Another thing that a lot of people have been asking for is different colors. People are sick and tired of the same old DJI gray, and so they may do that. I actually think they may do that because they did that with the OM4, they gave us that, off-white, it's pink basically, and then they gave us the normal DJI gray, so at least they gave us two options. I would love to see that as well. Uh, what else? Tim Coop, basically I'd like to see it match the specs of the Nano Plus with the performance of the present Mini 2. And yes, I think the Nano Plus is really driving a lot of people's desires for the Mini 3. Let's find one more here. Jonathan Jackson says, flight time, flight time, and more flight time is all I'm looking for because that's the only change I need to see for this little lady. So he wants to see more flight time. Personally, I think the flight time is great on the Mini 2. I really don't think we need that much more flight time, but I know a lot of people wanna have that drone up in the air for as long as possible. And then one other one that I wanna share with you, Mike from Drone Supremacy put out his wish list today, five things he would like to see on a Mini 3. And I agree with most of them. The one that I really agree with is this one right here. The fifth thing which I really hope DJI can do for this brand new drone is a brand new remote to go with it. Up until now, we've seen 
a few DJI products to come with this same remote controller. The Mini 2, the Air 2, the Air 2S, and even the Mavic 3 all have the same remote controller design, which in my opinion is kind of outdated nowadays. We need something portable, smaller, and maybe a little bit more ergonomical for the Mini 3. I think this will make more sense when we talk about small, under 250 gram drone, uh, because right now the remote of the Mini 2 is a little bit bigger than the drone itself. So I think to make sense for this drone, the remote has to be small as well. So maybe a whole new design specifically made for that Mini 3 drone would be the better idea. So what do you think? Do you think this controller design is already outdated and we need a new one? I kind of agree with him. I think we need something that's a little bit smaller to match the small design of the mini series. And so I'd love to see that. So if you want to see the rest of Mike's suggestions, I'll put a link for that video down in the description. You can check it out. Thanks for sharing that, Mike. Overall, I think there's a lot of great suggestions here. I think the biggest, like if I had to like pick one thing overall, most people want to see DJI focus on the camera. Like they want that camera to be so much better. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm the opposite. Like I think the camera on the Mini 2 is great, but we'll talk about it here in a little bit. So what would make a potential Mini 3 exciting for me? Well, first of all, and I'm pretty sure this is gonna happen if it does come, I think it's great that DJI has recently changed their SDK so that third-party developers will have the ability to add new features to DJI drones. And this is great because it means that the Mini 3 will be able to do things that DJI didn't make it able to do out of the box. A couple of the previous examples are Waypoints and Follow Me. These are not available with the DJI Fly app, but they are with other programs like Litchi. Now, whatever the features the Mini 3 has out of the box is only the beginning. Developers will be able to add new features that people want, and that's very exciting, and it keeps drones interesting as they age. Secondly, and personally, I would love to see more power on the Mini 3. And I'm not talking about more flight time. Yes, that's always gonna be nice to have that, but I'm talking thrust power. Now, the Mini 2 has a max ascent speed of about 11 miles per hour, and a max speed overall of 35 miles per hour in sport mode, which is really good for a camera drone, but wouldn't it be just incredible if you could make a small drone like this fly like 40 or 45 miles per hour? Not only would it sound really cool like an FPV drone, but imagine if it could be compatible, and I think it will, with the DJI's FPV goggles. I think so many people would be excited to see that. I know I would. And speaking of increased power, that brings me to today's sponsor, EcoFlow. EcoFlow is a world leader in portable power and components, and they have the largest selection of power units for any use case and budget. I use them out in the field for charging my drone and my camera components, but I also use this one right here. This is the Delta Max, and I use it as a dry camping unit and also as a home backup system. With their patented X-Boost technology, it can handle devices that require up to 3,400 watts, meaning that it can power almost anything in your home. I'm gonna put this back while I talk because I'm gonna run out of breath. <laughs> it charges with AC from zero to 80% in about an hour, and it can also be dual charged with solar and AC at a rate of 2,600 watts. It can also handle up to 800 watts of solar charging. It has emergency power supply, which means you can leave it plugged in to important devices, and if grid power goes down, it will take over within 30 milliseconds. It can be expanded with the Delta Smart Extra batteries up to six kilowatts, and it can be controlled and monitored with the EcoFlow app. So when it comes to being prepared for protecting your home and your family, nothing is more important than having power available. No fumes, no noise, fast charging, massive emergency power. The EcoFlow Delta Max has it all. Check the link in the video description to learn more about how EcoFlow can protect what you value most. Now, this is incredibly interesting to me, and I don't usually buy into leakers, speculation, and rumors, but you may know Osita LV from Twitter, who is one that typically gets under my skin, but he put out a design concept last December that was pretty interesting to me. And one of the things on there was an SOC, or system on a chip. Now, I wasn't familiar with that at first, so I had to read up on it, and it's pretty cool. This is a complete processing system on one single chip. This means that the flight controller, the image processor, the neural engine, everything, the entire brain of the drone would be on one single chip. And that would lower the weight of those components 
making it possible to have things like a bigger camera sensor, add obstacle avoidance, possibly change the design of the drone, making it more efficient, making it able to go faster like I want. That one change alone would be something totally new for a camera drone, and I find it fascinating. Now my question is, how do you manage the heat with something like that? I'm not an expert at all in that, but it seems like that would be a challenge to overcome. Anyway, we'll see if that comes true. Another thing that I would love to see a significant improvement on in any successor to the Mini 2 is improved wind resistance. Now I live in an area that is plagued by windy days and thankfully I have more than one drone. So if I wanna fly on one of those days, I just grab my Air 2S or my Mavic 3. But for most people, they're just gonna have one drone. And for people with a sub 250 gram drone, they always have to be conscious of the wind. The Mini 2 has a scale five wind resistance, which means it can handle up to about 23 miles per hour and it does a really good job but I would love to see that increase to be a scale six resistance, being able to handle a 25 mile per hour wind. Now finally, what about video quality? Do we need to have better image quality? In my opinion, no, not at all. The ultra light drone market is not meant to be used for capturing amazing images and video. That's what drones like the Air 2S and the Evo Lite and the Mavic 3 and other more expensive drones are for. Now, am I gonna complain if it has a larger sensor or a higher bit rate? Certainly not, but I think in order for the mini series to stay competitively priced and appealing for the average consumer, there needs to be some sacrifices. With social media being the primary sharing space for all consumer level content, I really don't see a need for higher quality video. If you want professional looking footage for clients or commercial work, then I think you should be buying a professional level drone and not a mini. If you wanna post on YouTube and Instagram or Twitter, then the quality that the Mini 2 currently produces is great. So if we ever get to experience something like the Mini 3, what would be your top three features that would entice you to get it? Comment your answers below and let's discuss it. Hit the like button if you got anything of value today. Subscribe for more content like this if you haven't already. Watch this video right here next because it's one of my best videos I've ever made and I think you really are gonna enjoy it. Have a great day and as always, fly safe and fly smart.